LTA 100 Pro, System Setup, Company, Main Company. In the Main Company section, you'll find four tabs. The first tab is the General tab. On the General tab, the most important field is the Name field. The Name field actually contains the login label, and it also contains the header that you'll see on all of the reports printed from TA 100 Pro. The other fields are not mandatory, but you can certainly add them if you so choose to do so. The second tab, it is the Configure tab. On the Configure tab, this is where you'll find global settings as it relates to TA100 Pro. You may activate the Daylight Savings if you're in a city or state that observes Daylight Savings. The Divisions. If you're dealing with a company that has multiple companies or maybe subsidiary companies, this is where you can activate the division piece. Remember, divisions will be created in another section. Department and Job. These are the two levels that you have access to in TA100 Pro. Remember, TA100 Pro only comes with two job costing levels, and they are Department and Job. But do not get caught up in the labels that we include department and job because on the defaults tab you will be able to change those labels to anything your client would like. Lunch and break. If you will be activating lunches in the system, meaning that you want the employees to clock in and clock out for lunch or break, or if you want the system to perform any type of auto deductions as it relates to lunch and break, you will need to activate these two items. If you do not activate the two items here, when you arrive into the shift section where you can create the lunch configuration, that section will not be activated. The use level wage before default assignment wage. Again, going back to the two levels that you have access to, department and job. If within one of these areas you are going to assign specific rates of pay, then you will need to activate the use level wage before default assignment wage. Paid lunches and breaks do not accrue towards overtime. Again, remember, if your client is not actually paying for lunch, this question is irrelevant. In most cases, companies do pay for breaks, but they do allow the breaks to accrue towards overtime. So again, the question is irrelevant. But if your company does pay for lunch, and the lunch time that they're paying for, they do not want that time to accrue towards overtime, you will need to activate this feature. The use SMTP for email. If you plan on using email to send reports, you will need to activate this feature. The tip reporting. Again, if you want the employees to be able to access tips from the clocks, you will need to activate that feature here. If you fail to activate the feature here, it will not be available at the clock. Wages. Wages are not mandatory in TA100 Pro, but if you'd like to see those for reporting purposes, you may certainly activate the feature here. Overtime Level 2 and 3. By default, Overtime Level 1 is available and sometimes recognized as time and a half. So the question is, does your client pay more than anything uh, besides time and a half? If so, you will need to activate Overtime Level 2 or 3. Use Swipe and Go. The Swipe and Go feature is easy for the employee to complete at the clock. They simply walk up to the clock, swipe the badge, and keep going. In other words, they do not have to say if they're clocking in or if they're clocking out. The system will decide that. Please remember, Swipe and Go is a three-step process. You must activate it from the main company here. You must then make sure the shifts know the Swipe and Go max windows. And then in the clock configuration, you also need to tell the clock that it's set up as a Swipe and Go clock. The Use AMPM format. This section is only available in the time card window and in the report section. Keep in mind, by default, TA100 Pro is always displayed in military format. So when you activate this feature, it will only show you AMPM format in the time card section and reports. Do not use floater for shift selection. In the shift configuration area, for every shift group you build, it automatically creates a floater for each shift group. 
If the floater is not needed for each shift group, you can simply check this feature and it will remove the floater. Editable pay periods plus the number of days. By default, we normally leave this at 2, meaning that you'll always have access to the current pay period to make edits and the previous pay period to make edits. If you want to also include a number of days, you may certainly do so. The auto logout after so many minutes. Again, if you want to have the system set up so if the system is idle for 30 minutes, it will go ahead and log you out, you can set that up. Remember, it's for the entire TA100 Pro system. It is not an individual logout perspective. The auto logout at a specific time. If you wanted to tell the system at 10 p.m. every night, the system should automatically log out. So if a supervisor or manager has left earlier in the day, but they failed to log out of TA100 Pro, at 10 o'clock, the system would automatically log itself out. The regional settings. The currency name is set at dollars. The date format. You can choose between American and European. The date delimiter. By default, it is a slash, but if you prefer to see a dash, you can make that so between your month, day, and year selections. Or if you prefer to see an asterisk, you can make that so. But again, by default, it is a slash. The next tab is the defaults tab. On the defaults tab, here is where you can define the labels. Employee. If you do not refer to your employees as employees and you have another label, such as associates or cast members, you can simply input that here. The department labels and the job labels, again, you do not have to refer to them according to how we see them. If your department really should be labeled as location, you can make that happen here. The length. Remember, you should always follow the lead of the payroll vendor. The employee length relates to the employee number. How many digits are in the employee number or how many characters are in the employee number? Whether they are numeric or alphanumeric will be determined here. The department or location number. How many characters are in that number? Again, if they are numeric or alphanumeric, you'll need to make that decision as well. And the same for job. How many job characters are in that code? Numeric or alphanumeric. Now remember the difference between numeric or alphanumeric. If we have set something at four characters, that means if it's numeric, the system is always looking to zero field. So if I said the number was 23, if I type in just 23, it's going to automatically zero fill to give me 0023. On the other hand, if I stated that it was alphanumeric and I only keyed in 23, then the number would only come across as 23. It does not zero fill when you use alphanumeric. The user defined fields. Think of these as six custom fields. Six custom fields that you can use to input extra information. What you do need to remember about these six custom fields, they are view only. You cannot run reports, you cannot qualify, nor can you sort from these six custom fields. The six custom fields can be viewed in the employee section on the detail screen. The badges section. Here is where we're determining the character length of the badges. If you have purchased badges directly from TA100 Pro, the length of those badges will be 5. The maximum will also be 5. Again, we normally sell a 5 character badge unless it is a custom order. However, if you are working with a client that has decided to go to another vendor for badges, you may need to change the length or the maximum. Maximum meaning the total number of characters included in the badge and the length basically meaning how many are we going to be using uh, to identify that employee in TA100 Pro. The type if it's going to be numeric or alphanumeric. The automatic badge assignment. No automatic assignment is normally your best option. Think of it this way. You have a stack of badges and each employee will be assigned to a badge. You'll simply look at the badge number and assign that badge number to that individual employee. 
The next numeric available is a nice feature if you are a very small company where perhaps you only have one person adding new employees into the software. If that is the case, it means that one person has a stack of badges and that's the only person. So when the system says to please use badge 4, they have that badge available to be used. So again, small environments, one person adding new employees. The same as employee number is also a nice feature, but there are certain situations when you can use it. And just as an example, if you're working with a hand punch unit, I do recommend perhaps using the employee number as the badge number. Because remember, most hand punches, hand punches with the exception of the HP 4000, do not accept badges. So HP 50s, 1000s, 2000s, 3000s, no physical badges, but you will still need a badge number. So why not just take the employee number and turn that into the badge number? The same with PC clock, if you're using a PC clock. Again, it doesn't require a physical badge. So again, why not take the employee number and turn that into the badge number? Or also with any of our other clocks, if you have decided that you want the employees to simply pin punch or key punch in at the clock and they will not be using badges, again, why not take the employee number and turn that into the badge number? The next tab, Exports. In the Exports window, this is where you'll see a list of all the possible exports that we have created that will take information from TA100 Pro and send it over to a payroll vendor. Keep in mind, if you do not see your particular payroll vendor listed, it will more than likely be a custom item, meaning we will need to create the custom export. If you do see it listed, you may simply select the item. So let's say we are working with Prime Pay. I can simply highlight Prime Pay, click Select, and it shows up in the right side of the window. To the bottom right corner, it says display only this export. We do want to select this feature because in the report section under exports, I don't want to see this entire list of all of the exports for my client. I can simply click display only this export and PrimePay will be the only export that appears.